And this is what mine looks like when I'm all finished. It fits perfectly in there and I even have a spatula that I was able to fit in there. For this crochet project I'm going to show you how to make a casserole dish cover and the size of my Pyrex casserole dish is 9 by 13 inches but you can make whatever size that you want. I'm going to show you how to size yours. What I love about this design is it creates a little floret or a little flower bud. You can see them all along the pattern. Now with this pattern I used a 6 millimeter or a J size 6 millimeter crochet hook. For this baby blanket that I'm making I'm using a N hook or a 10 millimeter crochet hook and it works really well and you can really see the flower bud when you're using the larger hook. So I really liked how mine turned out with this and I'll show you what brand that I used to make this baby blanket and again this was a 10 millimeter crochet hook. This is what it looks like on the back so you don't see the bud on the back of it, it just looks like a double crochet and then on the front you have the gorgeous design with the little floret. If you like the butter the um, baby blanket that I made, I used Buttercream Lux Craft Alpaca yarn, and I needed about four skeins for the main part of the blanket. It's a super super bulky six, and they recommend a US 10 to 15 millimeter crochet hook. It works perfectly with my 10 millimeter, and then the color that I chose for the main portion was pale pink. And this is 80% acrylic and 20% alpaca, alpaca. For my casserole dish, I chose Yarn B, Fresh Haven Pink. And you're going to need at least two skeins, actually three skeins of this yarn. And you may have a lot left over with the third skein. This comes in 3.5 three ounces, 180 yards. The color is pink. 100% tensile. So I like 100% tensile or 100% cotton. If you haven't tried 100% tensile style yarn, you're really going to love how sleek and fun it is to work with. So yarn choice as well as hook size will definitely affect the um, difference that your pattern will come out like. So again, I loved this 10 millimeter crochet hook with the yarn that I showed you. And then I like the 6 millimeter for the casserole dish cover. So you can make a baby blanket, casserole dish cover, Whatever you want to make with this pattern, I'm just going to teach you the basic pattern to make this little floret. It's just a fun, quick and easy pattern that you can take with you on the go too. If you like this style of pattern, you'll really like my little sweet pea too. So on my YouTube channel, you'll find my little sweet pea. And that's also another really fun pattern that I like to use a lot. So I've already made my larger piece. So I'm going to show you how to crochet this pattern with one of my smaller pieces, so I'm just going to give you the measurements of my larger pieces and the, stra the strap that I have for the top of the casserole dish. But for the larger portion of the pattern for the casserole dish, it measures approximately 18 inches in width and approximately 11 and a half inches in height. For the larger strap on top, the measurement is approximately 15 inches in width and approximately four and a half inches in height. You're also going to need two of the smaller straps and I'm going to show you how to crochet one of them and then this is the other one. So the measurement is going to be approximately 11 inches in width and approximately four and a half inches in height. So now I'm just going to recap. For the casserole dish I used my 6 millimeter crochet hook and you'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. The yarn that I chose is by Yarn B, Fresh Haven Pink again and it's 100% tensile. And if you're using for the baby blanket, you like the baby blanket that I used, I used a 10 millimeter crochet hook as well as a buttercream alpaca, 20% alpaca yarn. So we're going to start with the chain. To make a chain you're just going to take your yarn, whatever yarn style that you're going to use, and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make your chain, whatever chain size that you want for the project that you're working on. 
I'm going to show you four chains on video tutorials. You just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So for those of you that are making the blanket, I used a chain of 62, if you like that one. Um, but if you want to make sure that you end with a double crochet, you can start with a chain of 63. And so for this casserole dish, for the smaller strap, I'm going to start with a chain of 19. So I found that if you start with an odd number, then you'll end with a chain 3. So I'll show you what I mean once we start to work the pattern. So now I have my chain of 19 and I'm going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So count back one, two, three, four, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Then I'm going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the remaining two. And you're just going to keep making one double crochet in every stitch back across. I'm going to make one more with you. So one double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So now you should have a total of 17 stitches in the row, 17 double crochet stitches. So now to move up to the next row you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then turn your work and then you're going to make a stitch, a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So the chain three, this is the base of the chain three loop that counts as your first double crochet for this row. So you don't want to work into that stitch beneath the chain three. You want to work into the next stitch over. And in the next stitch over, you're going to be making a slip stitch. So you take your crochet hook, go into that next stitch, and then you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. And then a slip stitch into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way across back. And what you're doing is you're creating the little floret on the opposite side. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side. You should not have your floret on the wrong side. So you know you did something wrong if your floret is showing on the wrong side. So your floret will always be on the right side. So now you just keep repeating that pattern of a double crochet into the next stitch and a slip stitch into the next stitch. And that's how easy this pattern is. I'll show you how to do make work each row. So this is the floret row. You just make a double crochet into one stitch. And then a slip stitch into the next stitch. And keep repeating that all the way across. And then come back. So now I've reached the end and I have two stitches remaining. So if you start with an odd number, you'll see that this is how you should end, where I just finished a double crochet, so I'll make a slip stitch into my next stitch, and then you'll end with a double crochet in the last stitch. And you don't have to end this way, I just find that it's easier to end this way, and it'll make it easier for making a border too, because you'll always have a double crochet on the end. So then you just chain three, to move up to the next row. So then you turn and now you have the right side facing you. You have your beautiful florets. And then for this row you're just going to be making one double crochet in every stitch back across. Now you don't want to miss that slip stitch. So there's a slip stitch there and then you have your double crochet from the previous row. 
So you want to make sure you don't miss that slip stitch. And you're going to make a double crochet into that stitch. And for this row, you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch across. So you don't want to skip any stitches. So here's my double crochet stitch from the previous row. And then you want to make sure you get your double crochet into the slip stitches. And then you just make one double crochet in every stitch across. So you know that on the right side you're making your double crochets and then on the wrong side you're making your slip stitches and your double crochets. So that's basically all there is to this pattern. It's really simple, but it looks really complicated when you look at it because of the beautiful design, the little floret that it creates. So it's an elegant design and it's so easy to create. Just takes a little bit of practice. So you can see how I'm just making a double crochet in every stitch. So go ahead, finish making a double crochet in every stitch across, and then come back. So I just finished my last double crochet for the row. Everything's lining up how I want it to. Then I'm going to move up to the next row, so I'm going to chain three, turn my work, and then you're ready to make your rosette or flower, not rosette, but um, florette design on the front. So again, you have your chain three counts as your first double crochet for this row, and then you're going to slip stitch into the next row. I mean next stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. So that's how easy this pattern is. I love it. And that's why I wanted to share it with all of you. And it reminds me a little bit of my little sweet pea, but my little sweet pea is different. But that's another fun... Uh, uh, I don't want to mess up. I'm trying to talk and crochet at the same time. <laughs> but um, it's another easy, quick and easy one that you could take with you on the go. So again, that's my little sweet pea, and this one is my little florette. So there's a little bit of difference between the two. And I really love this pattern sequence and how easy it is. So again, go ahead, finish your double crochet and slip stitches across, and then come back. So now I just finished my last double crochet on the end. And like I said, you could end with a slip stitch. I just found it too confusing, and I just found it much easier to always end with the double crochets. And I found that when you end or start with an odd number for your starting chain that I usually will end with a double crochet on each end and start with a chain three. And to me that was just easier. So that's what I would recommend. And you can see the beautiful florette pattern that you're creating. I love this pattern. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And I hope that you'll share a picture with me. It's easy to share a picture. Just contact me on my blog or you can share it on Facebook. So you can find my Helen May Crochet Facebook page. So now I'm back on the right side with the florets so you know that you're making a row of double crochet. So you just make one double crochet into every stitch across. Don't forget that first slip stitch. It's hard to see it. But then you just make one row of double crochet. And you keep alternating the florette row. And remember the florette is always on the right side and not on the wrong side. This is what the wrong side looks like, and the florets are all on the right side. So the double crochet row is on the right side, and you don't want to skip the slip stitches. Those are easy to pass over, so make sure you don't skip those. And then you just make a row of double crochet, alternating with the row of the florets. And that's all there is to this pattern. You just keep repeating the pattern until you get the length that you want or the height that you want. So now I finished the height that I wanted and the measurements for mine are again about 5 inches in width and then about 12 inches in height. Then you can take and finish off just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to help sew the piece together. Here's my 
Here's a picture or a video of the florets. You can see the beautiful florets on the right side and then on the wrong side you don't see any florets. Now I'm ready to sew the pieces together. So I want the florets on the right side. So have the right side facing down. So have the wrong side facing up. Then you're going to take your piece, the smaller piece, and this is my 5 inch by 12 inch strap that I have, and I'm going to lay it right on the end so that the right side is facing up. So you have the wrong sides together. And then line it up on one side of the longer panel that you have. So here's my longer panel, and again, the measurement of the longer panel is approximately, let's see, the width is 18 inches and then the height is about 11 inches. So the bigger panel you have it so that the wrong side is facing up and then take your floret side straps, the 5 inch by 12 inch, you have two of them and they're going to go on each side of the casserole dish holder and then you want the wrong sides together. So on one end I'm placing one of the straps because I'm going to sew it and again, you have the right side facing up for the shorter strap. And you're going to sew along the top, the side, and the bottom. And then leave the right side unsewn. So you just take your tapestry needle, and I have a long end that I left for sewing, or just use the same colored yarn. And put it onto your tapestry needle. And then you're just going to take and sew the two pieces together. And again, you don't want to sew on the inside. Don't sew this part. Just sew the top, the side, and the bottom. And you just go in and out, just sewing the pieces together. And when you run out, just get more yarn, the same colored yarn and finish sewing it in place. So to tie a knot, I just go in and loop, go inside the loop, and just do that a couple of times. And then you just bury your loose yarn in. To bury the loose yarn in, you just kind of weave it through the work. And I like to go back also to make sure it's nice and buried. And then you can take and trim, and then just get more yarn if you need it to finish sewing it in place. And just repeat the same process for the other side with the other strap. Then take the strap, the larger strap, which measures approximately 4 inches by 15 inches. Make sure that the right side is facing up. And then you're just going to sew along the top edge as well as the bottom edge. Make sure that it's centered. And 